Now we've learned how to calculate these future importances. This time let's talk about some limitations. The first limitation is about our trees. So these future importances, they depend on our trees. So even if you have two trees that make exactly the same predictions on your data points, you may still have different future importances because they are calculated depending on the structure of these trees. And the second limitation is about our correlated variables. So in your data set, if you have some correlated variables, your trees may pick on one of these correlated variables and just focus on that and use that very frequently, discarding the other ones. And if that happens, you're just going to have really high future importance for that selected one and not so much for the other correlated ones. And if that's the case, this kind of counterintuitive because you know that they are correlated variables. Let's talk about this first problem, depending on tree. Here we will use this XOR problem and we will show you a failure case. In this XOR problem on the right hand side, you see this X1 and X2 features. And we have this 0.1 region where we will change from one class to another class. Here, when we are fitting our decision tree on this, our first set of splits actually won't change anything because we are not changing the impurity here. So it can be something like this, like this, this, maybe some verticals like this. So it won't really matter uh, in this case because we will still have the same impurity. Let's assume I go with this split here, this vertical one using the X1 feature in the middle. When I do that, I will see that I will split this into two places here to the right and to the left. And as my second feature selection, I'm going to go with the X2 feature, this time being larger than 0.5, because it makes sense. When I do that, for example, when we consider this right hand side, uh, the X2 being larger than 0.5, perfectly separates this data point. So when we fit this tree, if we start with this vertical split first, at the point of 0.5, we will end up seeing these solutions here. When we calculate the delta genies for this, let's assume we are trying to calculate the future importance here. We are going to see some strange things because the first split didn't really bring anything. We still have delta genie of zero because it didn't improve anything. But the second ones, they took this worst possible case to the best possible case because we perfectly classify those at the end. But before we had this 50-50 distribution, so it was the worst case. We all had this delta genies of ones here. And when I put this into my feature importance calculation, I will see that the first feature is zero, but the second feature is one here. Let's go the other way and start with using the X2 feature this time. Sam, so I'm using this line here. If that's the case, it's the same story. I will start with the X2, then I will switch to X1 because that can perfectly classify these data points. If that's the case, and again, if I calculate this data genies, this time I will see the exact opposite here. This time the first feature is one and the second feature's importance is zero. So as you see, depending on the tree structure, we have these extremely different feature importance results. Let's talk about this second problem, correlated variables. Here actually I'm going to use this MNIST data set to illustrate this. Let's assume we have this MNIST data set 28 by 28 pictures. I flatten them 784 and I fit a simple decision tree on this. And let's assume that that decision tree gave me this 87% accuracy on the test data set. Here, when I look at the future importances from this learned tree, I see these points here. By the way, I have this heat map here. Uh, so if you see something in a brighter color here, close to this greenish colors, it means that, or maybe yellowish colors, it means that they are higher in terms of the future importance. Here, when I look at these results, I see some peaks, for example, one, two, three, four, five, they are really high, but the rest is not that high actually. So this is kind of counterintuitive because I wasn't expecting to, to, see, to see something like this. Because when I look at the digit pictures on this MNIST data set, I know that these pixels that are close to each other should be correlated. So if I see some feature importance like this, I should also see something, it doesn't have to be exactly the same, but something similar 
for the surrounding pixels. And I don't see that here. And again, this is coming from this correlated variables uh, limitation. Here, this simple decision there just goes with one selection and just uses that all the time, discarding all the other ones and creating this type of situations. Here, for example, if I go with this selection, I will probably just, let's say, just select these five features. And if that's the case, I'm not even considering their like, nearest neighbors here. We will also have a notebook exercise on this, so I will open it up after this. But one way to fix this problem is to actually make sure that we are not seeing all the features all the time. So this should remind you that if we use a random forest here with some randomization, we can also solve this problem here. Let's open our future importance notebook. In this exercise, we will use the sklearn library to calculate our future importances. Just like before, we will, we will import our data set first. So here's our data set. We will have this training and test set. Then we will fit a simple decision tree classifier on this. Here's the key part. So with this future importances, we can get our future importances. Then we can reshape it back to this 28 by 28 origin size. Then we can have this nice visual here. Here is the future importances from my decision tree classifier. In this plot, you will see some dark areas. They correspond to low future importance. And you will see some bright areas where we have higher future importance. In the next lecture, we will use random forest models to calculate these future importances. And we hope to see some improvement.